like having someone in the background means they have to turn around. They have to stop looking at, at the Andro dashing for the Lex pushing up. And the, I mean, the Lex did a lot. And you know what? How with how hard that carried, um, seven ban. I think as well the, uh, the the impactful thing of it as well we can see from some angles because obviously we have a different viewpoint to the players in the game we can see that the seven's not in an impactful place like he's gone too far back you know he's too far away but as you said you have to turn around they don't know how far away he is they don't know that he's gone far and away enough that you can just put pressure push him forward and ignore him they have to be right. conscious of the fact that he's there so maybe in some circumstances he's... But then if you, when you do ignore him, what happens? He kills the Tyra. He kills the Lilith. So no, it's, it's almost to a point just mind games. Yeah, it's I mean, it's tough. It's tough because if you make the wrong call there, you just fall over. I'm going to get more flank spans as we go into game two on Ascension Peak. Corvus first picked again. Four flank bands, which is pretty crazy. And then Corvus still first picked the Ruckus again. So Ruckus? we're... Wow. We're looking for up. maybe not the similar comps because correct me if I'm wrong. BM Boat looks like he was actually a sub, but um, Team John was the one that he was on, right? With the, the triple DPS last game. So we're already changing it up. Two tanks. They think the Rom, Rom Ruckus is strong enough, and Harris maybe this time looking to go more the the flanky controller pockets sort of route. they might not have changed the names because the harris draft is okay this is all correct so john is is going okay. for for two two tanks this time so already switching it up maybe see bm boat on the androxus knight is not maybe as much mobility but definitely still a solid pick it was open maybe they're just leaving things open at this point they'll see if it's a good seven game maybe there's something we don't know about seven maybe you just like Maybe the the Vivian just completely hard counters them. I don't know. Maybe they don't want they don't want to leave that option open. But I mean, like, it would be a good map for it as well to play in the same play style. There's a lot of areas that you can just yeah. completely, especially on this map, it's quite a, a broad um, space that you can you can control. And there's quite a few areas as well that you could get into the locations that you maybe shouldn't be getting to when you're using seven on this map. There's a lot of uh, sky boxes you can abuse across different locations. Uh, it yeah. would have been useful, but we'll see. We'll see what they take here. They do get a chance to ban something out, though. So, I mean, at this point, you're probably looking for, for some sort of controller DPS to get out of here. They could get rid of the 7 again. It could be something like a Lex. But... Yagrath initially to be banned yeah. out here. Yagban, I think, makes sense. Um, you force them to play Ash, which in Jerom Ruckus, I don't want to do that. So, see what they do end up going for. But, like, just right off the bat, I kind of like the matchup from Harris. Like, this much lifesteal into those tanks is is really good. You get the Corvus lifesteal, the Lex life, like, all these characters have lifesteal. <laughs> yeah, that's a very crazy. good point. It's a lot of easy damage to get, especially if yeah. you've got the uh, the mark with the with the Lex there. The amount of damage output you could put onto a character like Realm is really significant. And then, as well, you're getting free ults from that ultimate charge as well. It's insane. Plus the sustain as well from the Khan, giving Lex an extra little bit of a boost too. So it turns... Okay, Ferdman is uh, missing an Ferdman's action. Oh, look at that. Okay, so it's 7 for the other team now, if I'm not mistaken there. And a Sky? You know what? Into no shields, those beefy health pools? I just realized it's triple tank. Triple First tank into triple flank. Uh, in, in, in the past, okay. triple flank has tended to be a, a good counter towards the triple flank um, they, they, they don't tend to have the mobility to catch these characters they can always try and stay out of arm's reach of these characters i mean once the realm is used his run how does the realm chase down a, a lex that can slide every three seconds yeah. a, a seven that we've just seen can quite literally traverse the entire map in two seconds the only one they can really catch is sky and that forces them to put credits into an item that is only going to affect the sky with the illuminate yeah. i mean i think it's worth doing but honestly i think if you're looking at dive targets you can maybe look for the con <laughs> ironically it might not be a good thing to run at but i don't know i think you're definitely looking at like meta versus anti-meta at this point because yeah, for sure you got the rom ruckus we've been seeing that all day you've got these big beefy tanks big supports behind them big controller flank with it and then you've got what should be what should be 
very good matchup. So it's like... I'm excited to see how this one plays out, to be honest with you. It's gonna be fun. Are the, are the meta tanks strong enough to beat their counters, basically? Are they... Can they, can they stay in the meta, or is... Whatever Harris is drafted, maybe, what we're looking at. It's so crazy and, and very entertaining to, to spend so long away from competitive Paladins games to then come in and see what is going to be considered meta. Because yeah. if let's be let's be completely honest, if either of these drafts were taken in your ranked game, you'd I'd be triggered. You would be absolutely going mental that your last pick picked Azan. The way that you'd maybe want to play this from Harris is if you're the, if you're like this Lux and you're trying to play like you can't just straight up fight three tanks running at you. So someone's got to get an off angle. So I'm really curious how these rollouts work because. Again, it's like it's the mobility. If red team can force fights where their tanks are there, that'll work great. But blue team's just gotta like hit them where they're weakest. Like it's oh, there's a there's an Azan by himself over here. Cool. Now there's three people on him and he's evaporated. <laughs> uh, the yeah. B and boat done something obscure enough Five, to distract them, four, to touch three, the point, two, to be a nuisance, one. you know, and then to now just get a couple pickups. Done. So. Really? Is it is it going to come down to how well the seven plays, or is it going to come down to how well they can play it as a unit? I mean, the seven is going to be a big part of it, but I think these rotations, like look at how this Lux is matching the Ron. He's still going to be able to walk forward, but taking a lot of damage for it. He's going to run in, just kind of poking right now. Does get grabbed, Rip. and the collapse. From, and then there's the collapse Dead. from the flanks on them right there, right? And right off the bat. They seem to be just fine on this triple DPS comp. I don't know about Team John with three tanks. He's but I mean, ours it seems them. more than fine. They just shredded them. And this is exactly it, right? That that realm goes in. He has to go in. He's no choice in the matter. You have to start pushing those flanks. But those flanks get dash resets. They push away. Okay, I need to push in further then as the realm. And then the Khan gets one grab. And then that's it. What does that realm do from that point onwards? I love this. I love the way that uh, the Seven is dashing towards the point in the areas of which the, the tank is going to have to push through as well. Just laying those traps. You have to touch right now. So if you're going to touch, we're going to put damage on the position you need to touch from. Evaporating them. That's actually insane. What else is going to get one, but instantly traded for it? I mean, listen, man. Like, I, I think no matter what Team John does there. Just did it again with the bombs as well. You have to touch here. I'm putting the bombs where you're touching. Come through the damage. No matter what Team John does, though. It's like, again, this is, this is screw you, Rom. I don't like you very much. The draft. Like... Yeah. It, it's gonna be so hard. Connell does miss. Didn't go for. I, you know, I don't know how you miss Connell into three tanks, but but God bless. But it I mean, seems like, like it wasn't really the time to use the Connell. To be completely well, honest, the is, red team the hadn't really go regrouped. It wasn't really a good angle for it at that point. But maybe he could see something that I couldn't see in that moment. But he didn't really seem to be in much of a position to use that there. To be honest, Team John almost. Playing this triple tank comp like you would triple DPS in that fight, sort of group, they, they just kind of collapsed on someone, formed the death ball and went, and I, I think that definitely seems to be where they're most comfortable, like that was a very clean dive, so they look to push up here. So I think if you can force scenarios where they do more of that, that'd be great, as the ROM is deep in the back line, maybe a little bit of an overextension from John. I would Fighting say definitely an overextension, no, I don't understand how... He survives in that position with the remainder of his team so far back. Uh, you're like, you're literally alone in the midst of characters that shred your percentage-based damage. That's that's yeah. a rough situation to be in as a realm. He used ult in that situation as well there. So he's he's down his ult now for the uh, for the defense. They have got 60 seconds left to get this back. They have another three ults on the side of John, two on Harris. Um, we might see another attempt at a car not to push this through for a 2-0, early 2-0. Oh my god, look how fast the rocket dies. <laughs> Vaporous, they trade for two, 3v3 now. Arzen dips, he's, he's gone, this guy's still pushing the cart. Finally the car. gonna use next. it. Nice. Get him off the map. I don't know if they have the numbers to push in, this Ruckus is gonna go mm, in. He's not looking, looking good for the respawn. He's looking to contest the objective, that's fair. Tortles is gonna trade his life for Arzen, but again, defenders spawn for the red team here. Now. 
that out. Damba's on the objective, takes some damage, dips back in the spawn, he'll stay alive. It's just lucky now. Probably gonna try and change targets here. I don't doubt he wants to keep the Damba as his target with Damba. Skyle kills Ruckus, hold up. They just, just killed two out of left field. Rondash is gonna get grabbed. He's gonna have thrown off the objective, and Harris is actually gonna push this in. It's a 2 0. And you know what? Honestly, that that came out of left field. I feel like John are just getting sloppy. Like that that full zone, that full zone. They went too far. This mid fight, it, it started off well, right? You were getting trades. Look at the mass right. They're going for trades, and, and they got them right. And feel that should favor you on the defense, but I mean, they just they didn't reset. And losing 2-0 against this comp, like look at it, right? It's solo tank con. It's a sky wrecker and illuminate destroyed them. So the fact that they go up 2-0 means that timer. I mean, that, it's going to be so much harder for them now. <laughs> losing is bad, is what I'm trying to say Four, here. But three, losing two, early one. is even worse. Yeah, not giving them time to really get online what they need to actually start countering this out. Again, we see here the, the uh, 7 pushing in with a, using a lot of the mobility to go into positions that maybe could be reached just on the back end of the mount already. Realm in the back line gets grabbed again by the Khan. Is he going to get melted as fast as last time? Ruckus the first to fall this time. Azan looking very lit here now as well. Is Azan going to actually get picked up? Azan doesn't even get picked here either. This is not looking good for the team, John. All they need to do is survive here on Harris for just a moment, heal up, and then just take out the remaining teammates for John. Ramald as well is going to keep... That's a fantastic Ramald to peel, actually. does keep him alive. Connell though does connect, is going to be a kill. John may be trying to get a little greedy there. Domba's mark, he should be able to get out just fine. Getting a little greedy, they they lost that fight and we're at 50%. You're thinking, okay, cool, let's go for a reset. Go back with our alts. They used it quite a bit there. Got greedy and now only a Zahn. They got a good opportunity to touch here. I mean, three tanks, you know. If you're looking at a composition that's going to at least be able to get an overtime, this should be a huge fear oh into the damage God. from Sky. Absolutely shredded through the car, through, through the realm there. And Azan picks up another one on the Androxus in the back line. That's a huge amount of their damage being stricken from them now. And considering they've just lost four out of the five, not looking very good for Team John here as it ticks over to the 99 and finally into the overtime for Harris here. No grab available to stop this round from touching, though, but he is ready one shot. I don't think I've ever seen a ROM die this fast. What can you do into the sky damage, the let's thing. mark? It's the thing, this is the draft. Like, this is the draft. And they were so confident suffered. as well to take the, uh, to take the, the, the Ruckus round so early, the confidence to do it, but... It seems the counter draft is 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 quite simple, really, to be honest. When it comes to defeating this kind of this kind of pickup, yeah, Harris has has kind of got it on lock. Well, I mean, th there's still things John can do. Again, Harris's comp falls off late game. They have alts. They could be fine, even though the first choke has been broken. They're gonna have to defend in this spawn for two minutes. The Dom Vault setting up something. Connell misses. Ooh, Ruckus off his pallet. They're spending so much, and it's just a trade. Even free v free fight. John is more sustained, but the Sky Ult is actually gonna kill the Androxus. Not it's gonna be low. He's gonna oh, the Lex <laughs> the, the ROM they're getting farm is just the Lex in the sky. The Azan does get forced out, but he's got his Damba behind him. Ruckus is the sky getting pushed out. Is gonna live, but the Avengers show up behind him. He's good to go. Bit of a messy fight now. The Ruckus does fall over. Khan shouts and tries to live. The free man oh. here. It's gonna kill on the Androxus, force the Azan out. Blue team still wants to fight this. Rom's on the objective, but this ain't your game, son. Get out of here. And blue team still looking to push. Alt, multiple ults coming up from Harris. They're all low from John. You need to reset and stabilize. That's one way to do it, but it's not enough. They're all five on the left side here. Close just doing his best, but being boat once again, saving this team. Now on the Azan of all characters, actually, which is kind of crazy, but does clean up to the defender's advantage, the respawn proximity, the ults they spent. It's too much for Harris to break through. Harris still have one ult available, and they did use it last time to get the push in, so they maybe, if they get one, oh, they're going straight for it. There it is. Azan doesn't have ult, there's no way for him to get back on at the end of this. Realm has to leave this angle here, he cannot contest the Khan at this angle, because all that's going to happen is if he pushes him too hard, he's going to get grabbed and thrown off the map. Huge ult coming through they have the to spend everything here. No they have to spend everything though, if you don't spend it now and you lose, right. you, you, can't, you can't lose games with ults up. You just can't, and they lose, they won't. 
think it's, it's ten seconds such left a on the board. Defense, man. They're getting alts forced left and right. And they did spend con, which is maybe what you're looking for. I don't know if there's a touch coming out from Harris unless seven can pulls out some macro bags, but he is coming up the right side. There he goes. He's gonna get touch. Everyone oh spoke too soon. Didn't actually get it in time. You do have to be there. Timer reaches zero, so defense from John. They they're figuring it out maybe a little bit more. It cost them a lot. It was a fight that was very much in their favor because of respawn proximity. They're getting pounded in every the other fight, aspect, though. but... <laughs> I don't understand how they win the point fight, though. Like, I know you you say that the Wrecker and the, the Illuminate counters them, which it does, but is the Sky's invisibility and the Khan shield really the problem they're having? I, I think it's the sheer amount of damage output they have in reverse to the, the lacking amount of damage output that the enemies have. Three... Maybe if they can go first, if they can go faster than, than Harris is, is what you're maybe thinking. But again, you don't really have the tools to do that because they just got forced out in the last defense. Tortles, the master item for getting the end of is absolutely zooming his way down there. We're going to have to see what they it's do kind from of this position. They're all just kind of like messing around here, giving over 30% cap to Harris. Kind of poking around. We'll see what they do care for. Oh, man. They are going to go in eventually. Sky, oh, there it is. Lex legs. goes down, traded out for the Ruckus, but John has more, more map control here. The Sky looking to push him. The Zonwell's making this really funky, and Arzen comes up big with the peel. 3v3 fight once again, but Arzen continues to just absolutely pound on this fight. You can force out the ROM, it's just the Azan and the ROM left. Master item yeah. free, the Connault again. Frizo. He just froze the night. He doesn't even teleport to it. He will die for that, though. But he did stall for a lot of time, so it doesn't end up getting traded out. This is such a messy fight. It's just he is on left, though. So back and forth between 84%. Teams. But the thing is, the blue squad are capping the whole time. Like, they're losing one for one trades. Each person, each team loses a character. But the whole time, Harris are capping the point, whereas John can't be on the point. Because they have to be so cautious of where the damage is going to be angled and where it's going to be coming from. That's gonna be it, Back to the drawing board with you, John. You need to. <laughs> You're playing Crash that game, man. That was not it. That was not it. And jeez. So we're setting up for. I think what's gonna be a very interesting game for you here, because we've got basically like both teams have played. They they've traded comps, right? Yeah, and literally. I mean, the, the more aggressive version has paid off both times. So, like, wh who's going to get it next game? Because both teams, have, you know, we, we figured this out. They've probably figured it out. Triple DPS. And the thing is, is well, they, they are banning flanks. You know, it's not yeah. like you can turn around and say, well, it's obvious. You just have to ban those flanks. They're banning flanks. Yeah, they are. But they're banning the flanks that are stronger. And they're, they're, all yeah. they're saying is, okay, well, you've you've banned out this Koga, you've banned out the Talus. We understand that, we respect that. Mm -hmm. But there's other flanks. I mean, this is this is essentially what I do in ranked 